Ah, uh, yes. Cyborg Ninja Games set in the far future. Now, where have we heard that story before in this channel? Hey, what's up? My name is Swag, and today we're having a look at Ghost Runner. A cyber ninja slash and dash in its truest form. Ghost Runner came out about just a year ago and recently GOG, the platform owned by CD Projekt Red, offered the game for free. Since I'm a cheap fucker and do like myself some cyber ninja warfare, I of course had to get myself a slice of the scored up speedaholic pie. Now, as I said, Ghost Runner is a cyber ninja slash and dash, but also a platformer but also a movement-based puzzle game, where every second counts and if you're too slow, you'll find yourself a quick death. The story centers itself around you, the Ghost Runner, a cyber ninja who awakens after falling from the sky with no recollection of who he is, why he is, and what he's doing. Kind of sounds like me after waking up. Traversing the planes of a cyberpunk-themed world, you're accompanied by the Architect. The Architect is a non-physical entity who was betrayed by his confidant, which led to the destruction of almost all other Ghost Runners. Getting head in the game will also get you into contact with the Climbers, a rebel group going against the supposed bad guys of this neon world. The story itself doesn't reinvent the wheel, however it is structured and presented in a way that doesn't obstruct you from going fast, since the conversations seem to be held in your head. I was pleasantly surprised by this and how it doesn't take away from the immersion of the game, but rather enhances it since you can choose to take a breather and listen or simply power through. Impressively voice acted dialogues guide you along the many rooms filled with bad guys, puzzles and a lot of wall running and dashing, only beaten by the incredible soundtracks made by none other than Daniel Deluxe. Seriously, if you like how the soundtracks in Doom pace the game and capture you, this is a whole different ballgame. Let's talk about some gameplay. Wall running, dashing and slicing through enemies is your main objective in many of the maps. Carving your own path and not being afraid to take a different approach than the obvious road ahead seems to be incentivized by the developers. Ghost Runner truly gives you all the freedom to complete a level you'd ever dream of. Want to go left? Go left. Want to go right? Go right. Want to Assassin's Creed some fools? You can, with the appropriate hours of learning the movement mechanics that is, but I digress. No stone needs to be left unturned and it's even rewarded by showing you new ways to start a gore fest. If wall running and dashing wasn't enough, then prepare yourself for the intense gameplay Ghost Runner has to offer, because the game turns the knob to 11 real quick, once you've gotten accustomed to a certain enemy and or parkour type. While at the start it seems to all go pretty fast, the game paces in a way that follows your progression of continuously learning how to deal with certain situations more efficiently. Got used to the single shot guns? Ghost Runner will throw machine gun wielding baddies at you. Those aren't enough? Fine, how about a 3-shot rapid-firing shield-wielding egghead, whom you can only engage from the back? Melee-based enemies, big-ass robots, you name it, and the game gives it to you. With an added element of object-based obstacles like shield generators, laser traps and much more. This all makes your angle of encounter that much more exciting and forces you to think outside of the box sometimes. On to the platforming, the true key element of Ghost Runner. It's bread and butter, you could say, is the platforming. Well sure, the game lays a linear path for you to follow in order to show you where to go, or to make sure you have a safe way to get from A to B, there really is no boundary to what you can do and what planes you can traverse. Pretty much every surface is wall runnable, there are multiple ways to boost your speed, and even some older movement mechanics like ledge jumping will make for some interesting parkour combinations. You also find power-ups throughout the levels, from a bullet time like slowdown enabling you to get to places you otherwise couldn't and slaughter your enemies, to freezing shuriken which you need to use to traverse otherwise hostile planes, or to simply snipe the fuck out of some unaware goons. Safe to say, the speedrunning abilities and mechanics are present, and to truly enjoy the traversing possibilities, you should learn some of the basic movements. The speed doesn't come with downsides though, and some parts of the game are highly inconsistent with the overall theme of the game itself. Ledge grabbing, for example, is the most prominent annoyance in my opinion, where all you want to do is grab onto a box to get on top, in order to get a more advantageous position to, you know, wall jump some higher, but instead the game boosts you forward, oftentimes leading to your untimely death. Otherwise, the platforming truly is immaculate. Which leads to the next point of level design and game mechanics. Ghost Runner being a skill-based game where every decision you make has to be either planned out beforehand or in split-second decisions, might lead you to think that dying a lot and not progressing will lead to a lot of frustration and some broken monitors. While 
Yes, not being able to progress due to either not understanding the movement mechanics or simply not getting through a level has its own level of frustration. The game has auto response and very, very generous checkpoints, meaning that you don't have to start a level all over when you die and there's no long respawn animation. You die, press R, and you're back in the action. This mechanic alone saves a lot of time and makes the game feel snappy and fast. The upgrade system is also something I haven't seen before. Well, first of all, you automatically gain upgrades by progressing through the story. The upgrades are basically Tetris-like blocks that fit within a grid in almost any configuration, making Ghost Runner a truly customizable experience, since you can choose what abilities you wish to enhance and what seems most important to you. Speaking of abilities, we get a total of four. We get Blink, which enables you to blink towards your targeted opponents and instantly kill them, bypassing any projectiles and shields. Next up is Tempest. Tempest is a sort of blast ability, enabling you to throw multiple enemies off the map and redirect projectiles. Surge is an energy sword style ability, which launches an energy wave that flies towards targeted enemies. Last but not least, and do close your ear holes if you haven't finished the game completely, Overlord. Overlord enables you to take control of your enemies and make them attack each other. The upgrades for your abilities range anywhere from more range, to more speed, to double charges, and so on. Last but not least, we got the loot section. While running at the speed of light and hacking through your enemies is cool, it's best done in style. Ghost Runner fashions a unlock skins by finding them forehead kind of customization, where you can find different styles of swords and gloves to wear in the less accessible or very obvious secret placements on the maps. There are also artifacts to be found along the way, which will deepen your understanding of the game's story. Now this used to be a given standard to obtain skins in every game, and I'm happy to see it implemented in a modern title. Exclusive skins can also be bought for very reasonable prices. To me, Ghost Runner definitely hey, gets Game of the Year for 2021. Good. The fluid gameplay, fast-paced decision-making, and overall incredible look and feel of the game captured me immediately, and I found myself spending a lot of time just jumping around maps, trying to find different ways to approach my next enemies, find hidden spots, or simply, you know, goof around in a game with a solid movement system. Everything from the soundtrack, the voice acting, to the way combat is tied into having to find your way through a level comes together in a neat package that just screams enjoyment and replayability. The high skill ceiling in terms of movement added to that just makes it a game I'll gladly revisit again and again just to have some fun. While doing research on the game and also playing it, I read that Ghost Runner 2 is planned to be released in 2022 as well, meaning this title might just become a series of enjoyable games to just pick up, learn how to get good at it, and play for fun. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Have you played Ghost Runner or do you want to play Ghost Runner after watching this video? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you want to check out my gear, what I use to record and or play games, I've added some affiliate links in the description to the exact products I enjoy and use on a daily basis. Affiliate links meaning that if you buy one of said products, I will get a small payback in return, helping the channel to grow. Stay safe out there. Later.